live. Hunter misfire? Joe Biden's son defends himself against accepting jobs in Ukraine and China. Did I make a mistake? Well, maybe in, in, in the grand scheme of things, yeah. How will this impact his father's campaign? That's debatable. As Democrats gear up to go head-to-head -head in Ohio tonight, the co-hosts reveal what they need to hear from the candidates and who's hanging on by a thread. Plus, Rachel Ray is lunching with the ladies, dishing on her sweet and savory life, and revealing how she handles tabloid rumors about her personal life. Let's light up Hot Topics with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. Yesterday, Joy's, uh, Joy will be back on Thursday. She's having a good old time, I think. I think she's watching us. No. 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 Would you? No. Okay. <laughs> when you were having that baby, you weren't watching the show? Like, oh. Every day. Every. Uh, <laughs> did it make it easier to push? <laughs> Turn on the view. Turn on the view. I'll get this baby out of here. So. I'm that just how silly it's done. Today. <laughs> <laughs> you do want to labor, out. turn this on. That's right. <laughs> you know, Joe Biden's son Hunter was on GMA this morning to defend himself against conspiracy theories from you know who about his foreign business deals in China and uh, board position for a Ukrainian gas company. Take a look. You know what? I'm a human. And you know what? Did I make a mistake? Well, maybe in, in, in the grand scheme of things, yeah. But did I make a mistake based upon some un uh, ethical lapse? Absolutely not. Why did you leave the board in April? It's a five-year term. And you chose yeah, not to I chose continue. not to. Yeah. Why? I think it's pretty obvious why. <laughs> this is your opportunity to say why. Well, because this is what becomes a distraction, because I have to sit here and answer these questions. And so that's why I've committed that I won't serve on any boards or I won't work um, uh, directly for any foreign entities when my dad becomes president. So did he need to come out and do all of this? Was this the right time? I mean, I, I know he doesn't have anything to do with saying, you know, put it on today. That's a GMA call. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 was this necessary given in, in our history in America of folks working in different places and such? Well, you know, I, I certainly think that um, there have been a lot of people that have said, wow, why hasn't Hunter come out? Uh, we haven't heard enough uh, of, a, of a denial from the Bidens. And so perhaps they wanted to put it to rest. But I just think it's the height of hypocrisy for Donald Trump and his family to say anything about any other family's foreign interests anywhere in the world because we know even though he's right i mean even though he's president he has work uh, you know he he his sons are running his company and they have work in two dozen countries including turkey in istanbul and we know what's going on in turkey and the other thing is ivanka works in the white house and she just got all these trademarks from china jared is meeting with people in the white house he works for the white house meeting with people for loans loans which he received so don't tell me that his family isn't using the office of the presidency almost like a cash register so he should say nothing about no one just my opinion but I, look i I was one of the first to say that there were, it didn't look good when this came out. And I am someone that says, get out in front of it, put a face on it, let people know that you're a human being. And I, and I think he did a good job of that. Um, and what I loved, he said, my dad doesn't have to defend me, but he, he has to love me. And my dad loves me more than anything. Um, this story's not going away because this is what the impeachment is all about. And the president and his kids are going to hammer this home. Uh, he also wants to stay out of politics. He's like, I don't want to be a political football. Leave mm -hmm. me out of this. And speaking as someone like Megan, who's been in politics as a kid, if you don't want to work in the White House or in the administration, 
it's a tough position to be in. You don't want to mm -hmm. be involved. So I actually think he did himself some favors because the debate's going to happen tonight. Tomorrow, the headlines, I hope the headlines are this interview still because the Democrats have a lot of other issues to be talking about right now, including the life of the American people. Mm -hmm. Our military, Syria, the economy, yeah. health care, the list goes on and on and on. So if this is our biggest issue right now, what's going on with Hunter Biden, yes, it looked bad. I hope that we can all learn from this, including the Trump family, and say ethics do matter, where we work matters. But we've got bigger issues to solve right now, in my opinion. We've got to move on. I'm sorry, I'm kind of over this story. I really am. I think we need yes, to move along. As unfortunately, the rest of the country is trying yeah. to figure it out. But go ahead, Ben. Yeah. So this is hard for me. Mm -hmm. I totally disagree with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think he did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, I think when he said, look, I'm a private citizen, part of the problem is he also said I probably wouldn't have gotten this job if I weren't a Biden. Mm -hmm. And I think it was some criticism that's been held against other politicians' mm -hmm. children is you sort of have to choose your lane. And I get that um, there are kids who don't, and I say kids, by the way, he's almost 50 years old, mm -hmm. Pe family members of politicians who say they don't want to be about it. But I know for my family, and again, it's just my experience, you're a unit. And I always say it's like being in a mafia family and you all roll together and you know what you're getting into. So the oppo that's done, I don't understand why you would do this interview at this moment in time. And maybe this was just like a call by ABC, but this will be a conversation in the debates tonight. And if you don't think Julian Castro or Kamala Harris is going to take the shot when they have it, metaphorical shot. I keep saying that because I talk like a redneck, I'm sorry. Um, I don't understand the strategy of having it done right now. I would have preferred to see him in a suit. I would have preferred to see him one-on-one um, -on -one in a studio. I think it's fine if you're talking about your addiction issues, but when you're talking about possibly taking, well, taking money that people have questionable ethics behind. And listen, it, this is breaking my heart. It's breaking my heart all day long. I love Joe Biden. I love his family. Hunter Biden has had a lot of issues he's struggled with for a long time. But you know what's also breaking my heart? Some of these poll numbers. Elizabeth Warren is leading in the CBS YouGov poll 32 to 24 percent in New Hampshire. So she's going to take these opportunities. And yes, the American public, I don't know who cares. The Democratic primary voters are going to care. And Elizabeth Warren, mark my words tonight, or one of these guys, one of the 12 people running and girls, will take the shot in front of them. Well, I think it's interesting that that Joe Biden was the vice president for eight years. Mm -hmm. And this has now come up. He, and also, you know, uh, Hunter was working with this company before he became vice president. So they knew him, and so it's not unusual. But, you know, this is, this is something that this particular president likes to do. He likes to bend over and spew poo out mm -hmm. when he's nervous. Mm -hmm. He likes and to project so, also. Yes, what he's guilty of, he projects on other people. Look, it doesn't ab absolve the Trump family at all in any way. Theirs no. is arguably much worse, but the problem for Democrats is you are setting the precedent that we are so much better, cleaner. We are not the swamp people that the Trumps are. Well, actually, and when you have this conversation actually, that's actually on the national the, everybody stage. Everybody is the Trump, is the is the swamp people if we read and see who is, you know, from yeah, from the Bushes to Je from John yeah, yeah, in Seattle. Running all the way, yeah, but I, I don't think Quincy. Elizabeth Warren a, thinks she's a swamp person. No, the, most people don't think they're swamp people. But what's most the, people what's the are trying. To, well, I'm just. No, I'm saying, what's me, the alternative to the Hunter Biden response? Well, Wait, the alternative to the to Hunter Biden. No, I think Joe spoke about it. I would have done it, it earlier. I, number one. Well, I think Joe spoke about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of have to think. Well, how dumb was everybody in the White House to not have seen this eight years ago? I mean, this is, this is not like this just happened. Eight, the man was vice president for eight years. So if no one looked at it, nobody said, oh, this is terrible. And he said in this interview, you know, maybe the optics, yeah, maybe the optics are not great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But there, you can't point to anything that my father did. You can't point illegal. to anything that I did. That's illegal. That's and to me, that is the key. That's what the, the key. Democrats need to do tonight is what they've needed to do every time they Convince get together. The American people. Tell people them. what you're going to do for them. Tell them how you're going to make it better. Because now, Americans, you can't put your kid on the summer program because you don't have any money because you couldn't put anything mm -hmm. aside. But that's the American you work public at, broadly. Well that's, well, that's what I'm saying. But you, I, I'm talking about primary voters and the I'm battleground talk, that's I'm going on about right now. Everybody who is going to vote, because to me, if you're not, if you can't convince America why 
you're going to make it better for them just on a yeah. daily basis. Because you, you Americans, we all are working to pay our taxes. We are taxed but, within but, an inch of our behinds by everybody. And part of the problem is the man that's in there now mm -hmm. put together a tax program that was supposed to make it better and did But Okay, I, I understand. I hear you. Okay, Loud I know clear. you do. I do. And I respect what you're saying. Thank you. But I am saying that for me, the primary battleground that's happening right now and primary voters are still different than general electorate voters and this is a huge distraction and it's a huge narrative problem again when democrats are saying look at all the as you so eloquently stated sunny all of the money that the trumps are making and at the same time mm -hmm. uh, hunter biden is refusing to say how much money he made off these involvements he says i'm a private citizen i'm not going to sit here and open my kimono as it relates to how much money i make to me mm -hmm. make there there's many different ways he could have answered the question and no right. one is more emotionally involved with Joe Biden at this table than I am. I love him and his family I got dearly. That. I, got I would have preferred a cleaner interview. But don't you All think right. it, Wait, hold up. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's go and then come back if we're going to okay. do more. We'll be back with more Hot Topics. Later, Bolton bombshell. Shocking testimony that former National Security Advisor John Bolton warned White House lawyers about the effort to dig up dirt on the Bidens in Ukraine. How bad is this for the president? This week, get ready for one explosive week on The View. Tomorrow, one gutsy woman joins a table of gutsy women when Chelsea Clinton guest co-hosts. Plus, Alyssa Milano, James Spader, Victoria Beckham, and we're closing out the week with a musical performance by Common. It's all this week.
Mayor Pete does because he's he's doing pretty well in the polls, mm -hmm. and he's he's really framed himself as a centrist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I, you know, who's going to be watching this very closely is Michael Bloomberg. There are reports that he is getting pushed to run uh, mm -hmm. by none other than Judge Judy, who has said, you know, I don't think the loudest voices in the room should control the conversation. She she loves that he's a centrist. Yeah. I agree with her on that, and it also tells me that people are concerned that the options that we have right now aren't going to necessarily beat Trump, that there is a push for other people that come down this middle lane that, I, that might... I, I think Michael has always been trying to figure out whether he was going to run. He I don't on, know he, if he he's... On the show yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. But I, I don't know that he's the right person, and you haven't heard enough from he's, him I mean, to know if he's the person. So yeah. I mean, it was good we to have city. until... Uh, uh, debatable. The, the, the audience <laughs> seems a little... I mean, a lot of our audience is yeah. New Yorkers. Look, well, we got to wait. Wait, listen. It's, it's, early. it's a while. It's, it's a early. while. Just keep so, watching. Th this is the thing, though. Mm -hmm. It is a while, but it's not. Mm -hmm. This is Like, January is, is going to be New Hampshire primary. That's yeah. not that far from now. And no. that's the beginning of momentum. And before that's the Iowa caucus. And it's the beginning that will get the ball rolling of momentum and feed out the other candidates. Things so, might have to go a little bit different this time because mm -hmm. we got a different... You know, this, that might this is... Well, that's well, that's you know what? I, I, don't, oh. and I don't know what will help anybody. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just want somebody to tell us, as Americans, where you want to take us. I already know where you know who is taking us. I don't like that. Yeah, I, I, I know where that. we are now. But now, you know, you just, who may, you just like mentioned Mayor, Mayor Pete. So mm -hmm. apparently <laughs> there are people who are annoyed with Mayor Pete for going after Bernie. Uh, Bernie Warren, oh, oh, Bernie Warren and Beto's policies yeah. <laughs> leading up to tonight. But isn't this the whole point of yeah. the debate? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is what you you're supposed your to place. do. You have to say yeah. why I'm the better choice than that person. He's also yeah. really trying to remoderate himself because right. he went mm -hmm. severely, severely left. Right. And I think he realized that lane is not only co-opted and taken, but Elizabeth Warren's doing it better than anybody else. Right. So I got to go back to the middle, and he's been attacking Beto on guns, mm -hmm. for, which, as you guys all know how I feel about guns and Beto, um, I, I thought it was better. He also called out Beto for trying to strip churches of tax-exempt status mm -hmm. if they oppose gay marriage, which will play very well in the middle. But mm. he's done some real damage. I actually want Mayor Pete to come back on the show because I have some real mm. questions about some of the policies he's been put out mm -hmm. because when he first came on the show, I loved him. And now... I'm just, I'm kind of done with the, the far left, whatever. Why are you laughing at me? I'm laughing because it, it, it's not for me, always it's just like, my no, 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 <laughs> for me, because it's like a marriage. It is like a marriage. <laughs> well, yeah, and you're finding And I walk out. Finding new things out. And I walked out on you. <laughs> I have a friend. <laughs> I have a friend that uh, is in politics, and he keeps on reminding me that at this point in the debate, no one even knew really who Barack Obama was during the primary. But he was and getting he a was, lot of attention. He was getting a little bit of wise. attention. Right. No, no, but that's not it was, actually. It was pretty that's early. That's actually a fair assessment. No, no disrespect, but that was the year my father was running, so I played very close attention. Yeah. This time he was getting a, actually a lot of momentum, especially in Iowa. He was getting Iowa. momentum, but he still wasn't. You know who else who is getting momentum? Became. Warren. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But he still right wasn't. Now. Warren, right now. Warren. Right now, know that he was going to be the I candidate. I literally don't at this know point. anything except Here this. That's like, this right. This is what I'm good at. Yeah. That's it. We'll be right. <laughs> Heritage Month, FYI, Megan. Yes, today we honor the first elected Hispanic U.S. Senator, Octaviano Lara Zolo. Born in 1859 in the Mexican state of Chihuahua, he moved to Tucson, Arizona at age 11. As an adult, he practiced law in Texas, fighting for Hispanic voters he felt were being exploited. Then he devoted his life to becoming a powerful political force for Hispanic American rights as governor of New Mexico, before making history as the first Hispanic elected to the Senate. Sadly, he fell ill soon after taking office and passed just six months into his term. But to this day, Lara Zolo is heralded as one of the most important Hispanic voices in all of U.S. politics. Mm -hmm. And since this is the last day, we want to take one more look at all the incredible people we've highlighted during Hispanic Heritage Month. And thanks uh, to the millions of others who we didn't highlight, but who have done their part to enrich and empower Hispanic heritage and our American heritage mm -hmm. that we share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yesterday, we talked about Fort Worth, Texas uh, police officer Aaron Dean shooting and killing 28-year-old a ton... A, t a Tatiana. Thank you. A Tatiana Jefferson through the window of her own home. Last night, he was charged with murder, yeah. which was pretty much one of the first times any of us 
have seen this happen so quickly and so clearly without having to beg people to take a look. Yeah. Were you surprised by the swiftness of this movement? I was very surprised, especially because when the shooting first happened, it seemed like the response was going to be same old, same old, which was let's, as the police department, release a photograph of a gun that was found in her home. And now, remember, this is Texas. It's an open carry state. As far as I can tell, a lot of people have guns in their home there. And so it seemed to most. me, at, at least yeah. most, so it seemed to me at first that, oh, my goodness, here we go again with mm -hmm. sullying the victim. This is going to be the narrative. But they seem to do a complete 180 within about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that happened, but I'm very happy that that happened. Mm -hmm. Because it's about time that, again, as I said before, that when you're black at the Starbucks or black eating ice cream in your own home like Botham Jean or when, you know, you're Sandra Bland, it's, it's time for justice to really happen equally across the United States. So, I'm pleased. You know what, though, I'm still... I'm glad that they, they acted so quickly, but I can't stop thinking about that eight-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor, the neighbor who did the right thing and yeah. calling because they saw something that they were concerned they about. They saw something and And because said of that, yeah. this is the result. Yeah. So there are a lot of people that are involved in this. Um, and it's, the whole thing's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And I think this is what the police department should absolutely do. And maybe a lesson that, that other police departments can learn from. Yeah. Of how you respond quickly. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just horrible. But you know, it could have gone another different way. I wonder what the conversation would have been had she gotten nervous that somebody was on her property and she had shot through well, the it's a standard ground state so it would be legal well I, yeah one would especially one would think but it, you're in your house and you think you know Re but this is regardless this is, you sit and play video games with their nephew you, and got shot there you go uh, justice so far seems to at least and it could have been again anybody watching this is this is yep. something that could have happened but, to any of us but it seems to happen to some of us more often, it seems which is that why way. We, we, which is why we highlight it, and we're glad to see people are moving in the right direction. We'll bet. Mm -hmm. Starting to get a little hangry. <laughs> so if I have a look on my face like this. <laughs> It's because I want some food, so let's That's get so through good. this. <laughs> a woman who's been married for 12 years wrote an article for the Huffington Post because she developed a big crush on a man she sees at her local Starbucks. Mm -hmm. She's already in therapy with her husband because of post-pregnancy intimacy oh issues. All right. But she makes daily visits to flirt with the guy at Starbucks. <laughs> this is not boding well, honey. Nope. <laughs> She's hoping that it's just an innocent crush that she'll get over. What would you tell her? I would tell her, stay out of Starbucks. Exactly. Exactly. Where's my food? Exactly. <laughs> no more Starbucks. Yeah, well, take your ass to Dunkin' Donuts, lady. Exactly. <laughs> Come I mean, on. That's right. That's right. I, I mean, know. what? what I actually, I think a little competition could be good for a marriage. No. I think it could be not when you're fun. in therapy. Not, not, no. 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 But the idea of like, oh, like my husband, for example, only dated blondes before me. I was the first brunette, and I always say, well, who was your crush? It was Heidi Klum. He loves Heidi Klum, and so I we kind of have this joke of like, there's your lady. It's it's so innocent, you know. It's no, like, I don't like it's it. It's kind of okay. <laughs> you have you gotta have enough confidence in your marriage to to play a little play a little game. I don't like it. Actually, I mean, there's a, a really cute guy at my Starbucks down the street. Don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> I just, you know, I, the, the, the question is, like, is a cr an innocent crush okay in a marriage? I just think... To Not when you're in therapy! Yeah, you're in therapy. Like, and if you're like in therapy, of, stay yeah. in therapy, get your ass yeah. out! Yeah, and the active visiting, Wrong with you know? You. She's, like, pushing it. She's, like, actively visiting, actively flirting. It's like I'm a hungry. weird temptation yeah, of sin. I don't like I'm it. I'm talking I don't about, like, like an innocent, like, oh... I thought Heidi Klum was attractive. Well, see, yeah. it's well, with I, social media I'm now. I confidence in myself. Celebrities People. aren't off limits. You can DM them. You can yeah. follow them. They can follow not you. All you can do them. little not hookups. Yeah. Not all of them. Yeah. No, not all. I don't. I, I think everybody's you can't kind of a, a, attainable right. now. I don't like it. Back off, gentlemen. Whoopi, you can't reach her on social media. That's right. You cannot. <laughs> no. Joy also. You can reach me in the kitchen. Joy. <laughs> where there's food being made. Yes. That we have not had access to. Yeah. And we still got a minute to go. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> She's such a good cook. 
Oh, Rachel Ray. Rachel, 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 Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. I love Rachel Ray, and I love this look yeah. she has. She yeah. looks really hot on the cover. Yes. And we would like to move How on. How about we ask her if she's ever had an innocent crush That's on anybody? Okay. I guarantee she would have someone interesting. Well, no, she has. I guarantee. I'll ask her. What if Rachel Ray is your husband's celebrity crush? I guess we got a problem oh, today. Oh, yeah. On the show, ladies. It's possible. But what if we're allowed to have crushes? that we don't have to tell everybody about. Or it's go no visit fun. them at the Starbucks <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> you know, because I feel like people, you know, when you do that, I mean, realistically, when you go and you tiptoe around stuff like that, you are, you are hoping that you are strong enough. Totally. Yes. Play and with I fire. think that you should not do that to mm -hmm. yourself. Yep. If you got a problem, talk to your husband. <laughs> yeah. show I turned <laughs> around and he surprised me he was behind me and I just jumped on him literally <laughs> and I didn't know but John was backstage oh no, oh, oh, no. no. the whole did thing. he set it up oh no no was it was mad? very bad no. it was a discussion for several days <laughs> stay out of the Starbucks there you go. <laughs> we'll be right back with more with Rachel Ray yes Sure, you will love watching The View. Oh my God, I love it. Just trust me on this. But during commercial breaks, you wouldn't believe what happens. Cause yeah, we love our audience that much. And anything goes. For your chance to experience the fun, go to oneiota.com for free tickets. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and she never ever comes empty handed. Yeah. No. <laughs> so please welcome the author of the new book, Rachel Ray, 50 Memories and Meals from Sweet and a Savory Life. <laughs> the fabulous yeah. Rachel Ray. Look how gorgeous you look on a cover. Have it, yes. uh, I love the cover. So it, the the book um, commemorates uh, my fiftieth year, right? My my uh, when I turned fifty yes. is when I sat down to write it. Yes. Okay. Um, but this is totally different. It's not just a cookbook. It's it's a scrapbook. You know, it's a it's kind of like a mini memoir of yeah. my life. And I wrote it because I wanted to celebrate all of the wonderful opportunities, like I'm gonna cry, <laughs> that I've had in my life. And um, I wanted to prove to people that anybody could be Rachel Ray. Oh. If you're an American, yeah. the American dream is still alive, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's a, uh, oh, that's great. So it's a love story. Yeah. It's an ode to being an American, a grateful American. Oh. Yeah. And, so, and a, a grateful American waitress and food professional. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so what's on the table? Tell us so everything. So there's so many different things going on here. Okay. Uh, whoop, you know my obsession with burgers. Mm -hmm. So I call this one the Big Smack. It's like my Big Mac. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, special sauce, you know, sesame seed to bun. Yes. Back in yes. the day. Yes. Right? I or love the sesame And then this, every year I was married in Italy, and every year mm -hmm. we take our, our close friends and, and family members to Tuscany to the scene of the crime where John mm -hmm. and I got married. Mm -hmm. And the cooks that I know spend all day in the kitchen with me and all the musicians spend all day rehearsing. And we have these big feasts at night and the musicians sing for their supper. Oh, so this is a dish wow. from Tuscany. This is a Tuscan style pot roast with roast potatoes. Mm, so good. My grandpa mm. was my best friend when I was a little girl and our favorite thing was um, salty fish. So oh, yes. uh, sardine yeah. sandwiches yes. and, and, and anchovies. Bacalao. Bacalao. Exactly. Yep. So this is uh, an anchovy spaghetti with preserved lemon and broccoli rind. Oh my God. My grandpa would have loved. Every year I throw a big rock and roll concert down in Texas and this was one of the dishes we served there. Okay, invite me. Spicy wings. Please. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Oh. I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is um, spicy wings on uh, jalapeno cheese grits. Yum. Ooh, cheese grits. Yeah. This is like a story of your life right it here. It is. I it's love a, that. And yeah. that's what the book is. It's all these fun episodes from my life. I write about Italy. I write about being the most awkward celebrity in the world. <laughs> um, it's, but in the end, it's supposed to just be kind of a big hug and a celebration of um, if you work hard and you're grateful for it, uh, this and you is make it. some good cheese grits. Yeah. And, and you make some good cheese grits. Good things can happen. So good. So, oh, 
and salad, of course, mm. so that you don't feel guilty about eating all of that. <laughs> I want to try some of this salad, as you call it. <laughs> great. Because, you know, I hate anything green. I know you do. Yeah, so I'm That's why I brought the burger, whoop. <laughs> I know, but the salad was called, it was like, whoopee. <laughs> Come here. So here I come. <laughs> it's a Sicilian-style salad, so it has citrus in it and oh, red onion and fennel. Mm, uh, look, I do uh, my... Rachel, we all love you. I mean, I think everybody I in America too, loves huh? you. But you're also the, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but you created a huge yeah. empire for yourself off of your passion. And I have always found that so inspiring. Mm -hmm. You're one of like the top five people I always look to for career goals. Thank you. You're at 50. You're a huge household entrepreneur that America loves. What advice do you give to the women out there who want to have a career like yours? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's easier than ever. Everybody has a voice now. You can go on a, a number of platforms and create your own platform. Mm -hmm. For me, if you're talking about the business side of things, mm -hmm. it was filling a niche or creating a product that doesn't exist. The oval spaghetti pot, for instance, mm -hmm. right? That's the first thing I designed mm -hmm. for the kitchen. The mop bean. The, mm -hmm. My family used to put the dish towels uh, in their waistband and that was yes. your apron and then you'd use it to carry the pots yes. and back and forth right mm. so we put pot holders in a, in, in a dish towel i think that so it's smart. more than mm. ever everybody no matter your age you can reinvent your life or you can start your life mm. you're your own boss now it's such an exciting time mm -hmm. but you do have to be clear you have to have a vision and you have to be able to say specifically, I want to do this, and this is why, because this, this has never been done before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think if you can narrow down your path and stick to it, it's a better time than ever to start. Absolutely. But Especially you've also made cooking accessible to the masses, and I've always wanted to make all niches of politics accessible to the masses. So yes. <laughs> thank you so yes. much. You really have inspired me for a long time. Thank you. So. Thank you, I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And the, I, I can't believe when you, when you came out here, you said, this is your 26th cookbook. 26. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's the, it's the only book where I've ever sat down and literally wrote it. Re re exactly. Yeah. Written <laughs> essays about my, yeah. my life. About I wrote all life. my books. Like, they yeah. start in, in notebooks. Everything I do in life starts with paper. When I was a little girl, everything I drew had a little bag. And my mom oh. said, why do you only draw girls? I said, what are you talking about? That's a fish. That's a man. You know, like, what do you mean? <laughs> and she said, well, because <laughs> everything has a purse. I said, that's not a purse. That's just where they keep their notebook and their pencil. No, I love it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so well, you great. also say um, that everyone should have experience working in a restaurant. Absolutely. I, mean, I got fired from Fridays. Actually, <laughs> I was a waitress. <laughs> I'm sorry. For sweetie. dropping food on someone. I'm sorry. Um, but, I, I, but I also worked as a short order cook while I was in law school. I think it... Why do you think that... I know, Whoopi's shocked. Why do you think... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have not given anything a thought except the food. <laughs> okay. Um, why I'm you... just over here eating. <laughs> Why do you, um, because, why do you think everyone should work in a restaurant? Because the food service industry teaches, first of all, uh, it teaches you humility. It does. Yeah. yeah it, I started out as a dish machine operator. Uh -huh. Like, you, you learn to be humble when you're a yeah, dish you machine do. operator. Um, I also think it, it makes you mindful of a customer. It makes you mindful of how to listen to people yeah. and how to try and deliver something to someone and be of service. There's a lot of great tools that come from working yeah. with food. And food itself is about sharing. It's true. You know, and about making people happy and, and nurturing them in a way. You yeah, know, but you've showed that on the air all your years. Because I've, I've watched probably every single one of your 30-minute meals, all your shows. They're back now. Can you believe Are it? they? I love it. I love it. 20 years, I, I love, love a gig at Food Network. That ain't bad. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> whoops, whoops, stealing some tea. I love, I love I know. <laughs> the best people on television are the same on and off camera. Yes. And I, that's what you've done. You've, you've brought us yeah. your home life, too. That's we know what works about this show, dog. is that y'all are real with each other. And Sometimes mm -hmm. too real. Yeah. <laughs> but, we are, but that's what people like about it. Yeah. 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 Can I ask a crazy question? Yes, baby. I grew up wanting always to go to Mama Leone's. Ah. Uh. And it's you my talk favorite about memory it, of childhood. You talk about it in the book. Please t remind people about what Mama Leone was. Mama Leone was a real person, and this restaurant was like spending the night in Italy. 
Mm -hmm. the, the bar was the Blue Grotto of Capri. Uh -huh. And the dining room looked like the village <clears throat> square, the piazza. Mm. And there were little balconies all around. And the couples that wanted to smooch and swoon would sit up, up top. <laughs> and the waiters uh, would sing. And Pasquale was always already. It was magic. And my mom would save all year long to take us to Mom Leone's at Christmas, take us to one show, Aww. and let us buy one toy at F.L. Schwartz. And That's New York so was like being it's inside great. a snow globe. It was the whole world yeah. to me to go to Mom Leone's. This is why we love Rachel Ray. Her <laughs> book, Rachel Ray 50, is available now. Came out Rachel today. Ray Lasagna Lugger. It's also uh, available. And you know.